They were the godfathers of the jam band. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're taking a look at the history of the Grateful Dead. Get in the groove and let the good times roll. We're gonna stay here to soothe our soul. Rock band The Grateful Dead formed in Palo Alto, California in 1965, when guitarists and vocalist Jerry Garcia and Bob Weir, keyboardist, harmonica player, and vocalist Rob Pigpen McKernan, bassist and vocalist Phil Lesh, and drummer Bill Kritzman first started performing as the Warlocks. The band's long-standing association with psychedelic drugs began early on, when they became the house band for author Ken Kesey's acid tests, which were LSD-fueled parties in the San Francisco Bay Area. Their concept of a new style of life unites them, and that concept is, in most cases, drawn from the drug experience. The Grateful Dead themselves acknowledge they have used LSD. After discovering another band called the Warlocks, they became the Grateful Dead, and started building on that name by playing free shows. Following a short stint with MGM, the Dead released their eponymous LP with Warner Brothers in 1967. However, the blues and psychedelic rock effort received little attention outside San Francisco. The band then continued developing their live reputation by playing events like the Mantra Rock Dance, the Monterey Pop Festival, and Woodstock. They also added drummer Mickey Hart and keyboardist Tom Constantine to the lineup, while Robert Hunter began making lyrical contributions. Soon, the Dead released the highly ambitious but extremely expensive albums Anthem of the Sun and Aoxamoxoa. These records showcase their fondness for jamming and experimentation, as well as a psychedelic sound that spanned pop, rock, folk, blues, and country. I rang the silent bell beneath a shower of pearls in the eagle, wing palace of the queen, Chani. The band's talent for improvisations and varied song interpretations was best captured on their multiple live compilations and the recordings taped by Deadheads throughout the years. 1969's Live Dead was considered one of their absolute best. Though a drug bust in early 1970 put a damper on things, the Dead found chart success when Working Man's Dead and American Beauty charted within the top 30 that same year. We were a live touring band traveling America six months of the year. It was always difficult for us to adapt to the limitations of the studio. The Grateful Dead soon added keyboardist Keith Godshow and backup vocalist Donna Jean Godshow to the team, while John Perry Barlow started writing lyrics. And despite Pigpen's alcohol-related death in 1973, the Dead marched on. After the colossal summer jam at Watkins Glen Festival, they finally found commercial success through their own label with the jazz-tinged Wake of the Flood and the acid rock based from the Mars Hotel. They also distinguished themselves by using their massive wall of sound audio system during live performances. Mid-decade, the Grateful Dead went on a two-year hiatus while members concentrated on side projects, though the studio LP Blues for Allah was released in 1975. They resumed touring the following year, and in 1977, they dropped the more symphonic and less freeform studio album, Terrapin Station, via Arista Records. Late in the decade, Keith and Donna Jean Godshow were replaced by keyboardist Brent Midland. Don't you cry, try your eyes on the wind. Following 1978's Shakedown Street, The Grateful Dead only came out with one studio album in the early 1980s, Go to Heaven. Though a few live compilations were released, the band instead concentrated on touring. After a health scare forced Garcia to curb his drug use, their next studio album was only unveiled in 1987, but it was worth the wait. In the Dark became the band's first and only top 10 effort and spawned their highest charting single, the top 10 track, Touch of Grey. I will get by.
Reinvigorated by this success, the Dead were as present as ever on the touring circuit. Unfortunately, 1989's Built to Last was the group's final studio record. The next year, Midland died from a drug overdose. With keyboardist Vince Welnick and pianist Bruce Hornsby as his replacements, the band slowly got back on the road. After another health scare in 1992, Garcia died of a heart attack while in drug rehab three years later. The band then retired in 1995, but they remained in the public consciousness through various releases, including the Dix Picks concert series and merchandise sales. Surviving members continued making music together and separately, with notable projects being The Other Ones, The Dead, and Further. Though originally categorized as psychedelic rockers, the Grateful Dead essentially spearheaded the jam band. By bringing thousands of deadheads together through their unique musical style and transcendental live shows, the Grateful Dead altered the history of rock music for the better. I bid you good night, good night, good night. Thank you.